Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Art, and in this episode of From Scratch, we're going to be taking a little bit of a departure from our uh, From Scratch uh, GPU programming videos, and we're going to start talking about benchmarking, uh, and this is going to be specifically using Google Benchmark and uh, for CPU things. So we care about benchmarking because, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, when we're trying to improve something performance-wise, it's very much a process of uh, measuring and adjusting. So we can have all these great ideas about you know what will translate to good performance just from looking at code, but at the end of the day, you know it's really hard to understand every single aspect of a piece of architecture. So it's really important that we measure to make sure that our expectations match uh, our results in reality, and that's where benchmarking comes in. So Google Benchmark provides this really great and easy way to write benchmarks without having to do all the kind of setup code um, and boilerplate code that you typically need. So it's you know, it's a it's a really convenient tool. So uh, you can go to Google uh, GitHub.com slash Google slash Benchmark to actually download Google Benchmark. You see uh, the requirement. They have the requirements here. They have uh, you know a build guide, right, and also a way to install it. So you can just directly uh, access things like the header files without having to include the directory that it's in every single time. Um, and a couple examples as well. Uh, so we'll go ahead and go through and we'll do our own example and we'll show off something called a short string optimization. So let's go ahead and get started. So uh, we'll just call this, uh, say, string bench.cbp and we'll say that this program profiles the uh, short string optimization as implemented in uh, GCC, right? So this is some, the short string optimization has different implementations depending on the compiler. Um, as implement GCC um, using Google uh, Benchmark, right? And we'll say this is by Nick from Coffee Before Arch. Okay. So the first thing that we need uh, when we're using some using Google Benchmark is we'll need an include, right? And this will be this benchmark slash uh, benchmark dot h, right? And if we don't install it, we need to you know as a compiler option, we need to say the directory where this is located in. Uh, so this will give us all the interfaces we need. And then I said we're going to be profiling the short string optimization, so we'll of course need uh, string. And then you know we'll also have a vector, so we'll build a whole bunch of different strings, and then uh, we'll just push them back into a vector. So we'll do say 10,000 strings, and we'll profile the creation of 10,000 strings. Uh, so we'll also have include um, vector as well. And let's go ahead and just you uh, using uh, namespace standard just so we don't have to write standard string standard vector okay so when we're talking about a benchmark uh, the way that this translates with Google benchmark is a function right so our function is basically what our benchmark is so we'll have a static void function right in this case we can just call it whatever we want so maybe string bench and then we have to pass something in and that is this uh, uh, benchmark uh, colon colon state and then we pass this in by reference right so and state okay so as of this point this is uh, we're passing in this benchmark state here uh, how do we know which benchmark that we want to call well we have to register the benchmarks we want to call so we'll register the benchmark and that means when we run the application it will run this function right the string bench function and the way we do that is with uh, all uppercase benchmark and then uh, just like calling a function, right, we pass in string bench. Okay, oh, and we need a semicolon. Right, so now we've registered our benchmark. So when we run this application, it should run this benchmark. Uh, but of course, we need a main function as well. Uh, we don't have to write our own main function in this case. All we need to call is benchmark main, right? So again, uh, the whole point of Google Benchmark is to get this kind of uh, benchmarking process uh, to you know, expedite it, right? So we don't have to write all this boilerplate code, right? So we can get the main function taken care of us. And uh, all we have to worry about is whatever is going to be in this uh, pro this function we want to profile. Okay. So, you know, with the short string optimization, I said that depending on the size of the string, we might be able to store it within the string object on, uh, on the stack instead of having to do dynamic allocation and store it on the heap. So I might want to test a range of different string sizes, right? So how do I go about doing that? Well, I can go ahead and use this uh, dense range, 
right? And I can say, I wanna go from zero to say 32. So uh, now what's going to happen inside of this benchmark state right here, I can go ahead and start accessing uh, these variables, right? So it'll pass in zero to this function, then one to this function, two, three, all the way to 32. And you don't just have to have a single argument as an input, you can pass in multiple different arguments. You can have arguments that don't change. You can not step by one, but you could step by an arbitrary number. You can generate random pairs or different pairs of inputs if you want. Um, all that's covered, or a lot of that's covered inside of that readme. Uh, in this case, we'll just keep it simple and we'll pass in this dense range and we'll just sweep it from zero to 32. Okay, so that's good, but how do we actually access those input arguments? All right, so uh, here we'll say we'll extract the string size. And all we need to do is say, say int length. So this is the length of the string that we're passing in right here that we want. And this is just going to be equal to s, uh, which is our state, right? That's what we've named this. We could call this whatever name we want. Uh, s dot, uh, in this case, it's going to be range, and then it's positional. So we're only passing in one argument. So it's just going to be in position zero. If we're passing in two arguments, we would have you know range zero and range one, right? So now we've, we've went ahead and uh, extracted our string length. The next thing we'll do is uh, we'll just create a vector to store our strings, right? So here we'll just say, uh, we'll have a vector of strings, uh, and then we'll just call this V. And then because we don't care about the dynamic allocations of the vector, we wanna make sure that the vector doesn't dynamically allocate. So whenever we do pushback and there's not enough, uh, and the vector's not big enough, it will have to go ahead and do a dynamic allocation. And that dynamic allocation is exponential, so it eventually, you know, It'll be a while before we have another dynamic allocation, but we don't we don't really care about those dynamic allocations. So we can just go ahead and do v dot reserve. In this case, uh, why don't we say we want to create ten thousand strings for each of these inputs, right? So we'll just reserve space for ten thousand strings in there. Okay. So then it comes to actually running our benchmark, right? So run the benchmark. So uh, one of the big things uh, when we're creating micro benchmarks is how do we know, you know, how long we should run a benchmark for? How many iterations? Well, that's another thing that gets taken care of for us because, uh, you know, basically what Google Benchmark will do is it'll run the benchmark until you get some kind of stable result. So it'll help you kind of filter out the outliers and just give you a result across, you know, that, you know, depending on how long it takes to run. You know, it may just be a couple iterations, it may be thousands or millions of iterations that it'll run it for. So to run the benchmark and to actually only profile within the section, what you typically do is you can use a for loop, right? And it's an, uh, you know, more modern type for loop. So it'll be auto, right? And you know, that in the examples they use this, you know, auto underscore and then whatever its state is, right? So in this case, we're just passing it in as S and basically what happens here is that everything within this for loop right here, this will just keep running and keep running and keep running until it gets a stable output. So this isn't fixed. Um, this isn't fixed for all of your input sizes. It will change based upon how much computation is in this loop. Now there's an alternative to doing this, which is you can use a uh, uh, while and then whatever your state variable is. So s dot keep running. Right. And that's another way you can do this as well. All right. And so this is uh, pretty much equivalent. Um, I think I heard something where this might have a little bit more overhead, but if you're profiling like very large, you know, features, this loop overhead is probably not going to cost you that much. That being said though, right, we'll just go back to this for loop as it's given in the examples on Google benchmark. Okay, so what are we actually going to do each time? So we're going to create a string, right? So we'll call a string, str. We'll call it of string length, or we'll create a string of string length, and then maybe just of x's, right? So every single iteration, it will create a string of, you know, first of zero uh, length. So zero x's, then one x, two x, three x. And then, uh, right, we wanna fill up a vector. So we'll do this in a for loop. So for int i is equal to zero i is less than, we've got 10,000 spaces in our vector, so we'll iterate 10,000 times, i++, plus plus. uh-oh, um, ah, we, we missed a, 
parenthesis there. All right, there we go. All right, and we'll move this back over, delete the string, move it inside of the for loop, shift it over, right? So uh, basically it'll just keep running this for loop all these times. And so in this case, it's just creating it. And we can also say just, you know, uh, v dot push back, right? And then whatever string is. Okay, and that's really it for our benchmark. So let's just kind of recap it before we run it. So well, we have to first include benchmark slash benchmark.h, right? This header file. Then uh, to create a benchmark, it's a static void function. We called ours string bench and we pass in this benchmark state. If we want to pass in variables, we have to do something like dense range, and there's a number of different ways to pass in variables um, that depends on your circumstance. So check out their uh, GitHub page for that. Uh, we have to register the benchmark as well. So we call this all uppercase benchmark with string bench. And this just says for this, uh, I want you to run this benchmark when I call uh, this, uh, when I after I compile this and I run this binary, right? What actually gets profiled will be within this, either this for auto underscore colon S, right? It doesn't really matter what this underscore is. Uh, this is what will just get uh, profiled, whatever's in this for loop. And then, uh, or we could use that uh, while S dot keep running. And then this is what we're actually profiling, right? And then we have to have a main function, but we don't have to write it ourselves. We can just have this benchmark main, right? So the key point here is we were able to write a benchmark that profiles, um, you know, string creation without much work, right? That's the key advantage of using something like Google Benchmark. Okay, so how do we compile this, right? So we'll use G++, pass in string bench, we're using that auto feature. So we'll set the standard equal to C++11. And then we have to link against a couple things. We have to link against libbenchmark. Oops. And we also have to link against libpthread. So these are both used by Google Benchmark. And then that's it, right? So in at least for our case, right? And then dash O, and we can call this a uh, string bench, right? So now it's compiled. Now what happens when we run this, right? So we all we did was basically create a for loop, uh, a nested for loop inside of our code, you know, initialize a vector and maybe some strings. So what actually gets printed out when we run? So you see, you've got this boilerplate stuff. It tells you the system you're running on, the size of your caches. Um, and then it starts running these benchmarks, right? So this is exactly what we um, had set up, right? So string bench with input zero, one, two, three, and it will go all the way to 32. And you see it runs for a variable number of iterations. So 719 iterations, 925. And that's that for loop we have, that, um, that for auto underscore colon uh, S, right? It just keeps running it until it gets kind of a stable result, right? And so you know, we cared about string creation here because we we're talking about the short string optimization. And this is really the point that we care about, right? So um, like I said, kind of at the beginning of this, the short string optimization, uh, at least as implemented by GCC, the first 15 bytes, right? So the first 15 characters of a string can be stored on the stack. Anything after that, you have to do a dynamic allocation and store it on the heap. And you see that for zero to 15, you get fairly consistent performance results. So about you know, 907,000 nanoseconds, um, or about 80,000 for a lot of these as well. But you see this clear jump between size 15 and size 16, where it jumps up to about 1.2 million nanoseconds, right? So about 400,000 nanoseconds faster. Um, but another nice thing about Google Benchmark is that we don't have to go in and recompile if we only want to run some of these benchmarks, right? Or one of these benchmarks. So we can do, uh, let's zoom out a little bit. Right, so we can do dash dash benchmark underscore filter, and we can just select one of these. So let's say we want to test the, the two, the boundary points, we can say 15, and we can run 15, right? And then we can also change this to 16, and then we can only run 16, right? So now we can start narrowing in. If you want to get an even bigger picture, so maybe we said, well, you ran it for 725 iterations, that's not enough. Maybe I want more, I want a better picture. So I can also do um, dash dash benchmark min time. And this is the minimum amount of time in seconds that it will run the benchmark. So it won't go based on iteration, it'll go based on seconds. So here I'll say benchmark min time is equal to, let's say three, and now we'll run it for three seconds, right? So, you know, it'll be, you know, quite a few more iterations now. So it takes a little bit of time, right? So instead of running it for 500 uh, iterations, it runs it for about 
uh, 3.3 thousand iterations, right? And that allows you to kind of narrow in more on your results, right? And we can also do this for 15. Um, but a problem with this, as we've kind of seen right here, is that we're printing out nanoseconds. That's also a parameter that we can change. So if we go back into, um, uh oh, we didn't, we don't have it open. Let's open string bench again. .cpp. So uh, again, with this benchmark, we can say, you know, what we want the units as. So we'll we'll have a unit, right? And the, this will be benchmark, and then k, and then say if we want it in milliseconds, right? It'll just be k millisecond, All right? And now we can go ahead and recompile this. And now when we run it again, we'll get our results in milliseconds now, right? So uh, it can be very, you know, if we have something that, you know, runs for quite a while, we don't want to see that number as millions of nanoseconds. We want something a little more human readable, right? And so this is just a great way of being able to profile things quickly and see large order performance trends, right? So you can really see the gap between when we're allocating and when we're not allocating. So all of these are, you know, inside of the string object on the stack, and then everything after 15, these are all allocated on the heap, right? If you're interested more in the short string optimization, I have a video of that in my C++ crash course uh, series as well. Okay, so that's gonna go ahead and do it for today. Um, as always, all of this code can be found at github.com slash uh, coffee before arch, right? So here's my GitHub page, right? Uh, if we go to the repositories, you see we've got, um, here's the from scratch series, and then we also have uh, the C++ Crash Course series. So if you're really interested in the short string optimization, um, go ahead and take a look at that uh, specific video we have on SSO. Um, so I think I've got it here in the readme as well, right? So we've got a, a link to the video for the short string optimization, as well as the code and the Google benchmark uh, example that we used for that, which is the same one that we wrote together today. But like I said, it's going to do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.